I linked in my Discord in case any of you guys want to join. We have an Elden Ring channel, and on a rare occasion, I may even talk to you for like five seconds. Alright, let's roll. You can cast offensive spells with delayed or lingering damage like magma sorceries and then use Alabaster Lord's pull to bring enemies into its effective range. Yes, that's the exact same thing I said about Gravitas in the last video, and that's because this is the exact same skill. Combo with Godfrey Icon and Shard of Alexander, and then spam this at Great Bow Knights and they'll never bother you again. Getting hit with this unique skill prevents healing with your flask, which basically makes this the PvP variant of Loretta Slash. But you can also use it against NPC invaders. You can hold enemies in place by stunlocking them with the fire projectiles, and then use that to set up the initial uppercut attack. Use the verticality on this one to dodge most ground attacks like Crucible Knight's Tail or the Shockwave from Godfrey's Stomp. Don't immediately go into the follow-up. Sometimes you can break an enemy's stance by only using the first attack, allowing you to just walk up to them and get a nice critical. You can kill shit through ceilings. Unfortunately, not compatible with Godfrey Icon or Old Lord Talisman, because why would it be? This is already way too powerful. Bloodhound's finesse is a staple for pure melee builds. The weapon applies blood loss, so blood flame blade or blood grease can boost its efficiency, and against heavy hitters with high poise, the first attack can just be used to dodge, while the second attack can be used to counter. Who decided these needed to do this much damage? With Shard of Alexander and Carrion Filigreed, you can melt pretty much any big boss you want. It can even stunlock those ancestral follower bitches. It's shit through walls. Give your enemies the finger. It looks like it travels far, but it's only effective if you're as close to an enemy as possible. So wait until an enemy is finished with a combo or something and catch them on their downtime, or go for a critical and hit them with it as they're getting back up. Most of you already know this because everyone and their dog has made a video essay on how it synergizes with certain builds, but you need to actually have the shield in your hand for the buff to work. Yeah, I know, I know, I want to two-hand my giant crusher as much as you do, but you just can't. <laughs> no, you don't get a tip. Next. Have you ever looked at the Blasphemous Blade in the Moon Veil and thought, wow, I sure wish I had a shitty version of both of these at the same time? Look no further. The HP sapping effect is honestly kinda crap, but it can be buffed with Holy Shrouding Tear, Sacred Scorpion, and it penetrates enemies, making it useful in crowds. So, I guess it's not all bad. It's pretty bad. The only death-based ability in the game without the HP debuff, and that's fucking lame. Look, you can even see the visual effect is just taken from the Black Flame incantations. Like, seriously? <laughs> Great for taking out the dogs and ravens in Kaled. If you can hit something with the very first attack, they'll probably stay there to receive all four. Just go to PvP. Nope, not even against NPC invaders. If you're looking for a PvE tip, throw it in the trash. Destined Death's HP debuff can stack with a Black Blade, but not Blade of Death. Yeah, I know, it confused me too at first, but upon testing them all, I saw that Blade of Death and Destined Death have the exact same effect ID. The HP sapping effect, however, does stack, and Destined Death applies this effect five times in total. This is why against crowds, you might see some enemies taking less damage than others. So break an enemy stance and then pop this out point blank, and you should get all five to hit. The incredibly slow wind-up time tells me they definitely don't expect you to use this in an emergency situation against a hard-hitting enemy, but instead against a bunch of low HP mobs just hanging out somewhere on a random Kaled street. The first attack is better used as a dodge against thrusting attacks, while the follow-up attack is better equipped for doing damage. Now where did I put my rotten wing sword? The atomic ass crash maneuver to rule them all. With enough levels invested into faith, it outclasses the other slams both in damage and in poise breaking. Much like the other two slams, the jump can be used to dodge ground crawling attacks. The first person to upload a video of them no hitting Godfrey with only my ass will get a special mention in the next video. And no, I'm not kidding. The initial explosion does holy damage and knocks enemies back. Great for setting up the following slash if someone is right in front of you. Like the other Rancor sorceries, it requires a dedicated intelligence stat to get good damage out of it, but the stunlock potential is there for splitting up groups of enemies or keeping an enemy open to more attacks. I know it's slowly becoming a meme on my channel to just say something is good against hands, but being good against hands might actually be the only benefit to using Fire Breather for anything. The unique weapon skill of the Giant's Red Braid, one of the greatest multi-purpose skills in the game. In addition to its massive damage if all five attacks actually land, it has great stopping power even against larger enemies and can wipe out entire crowds of enemies in a single use. It's just cool as shit. I don't have any tips for this except just don't sleep on it. 
It's fire damage and a weapon skill, meaning fire buffs like Flame Shrouding Tear and skill buffs like Carrion Filigreed or Shard of Alexander can all give this skill some extra punch. If you build around it, you can take out some pretty strong enemies with this thing. This one's basically just a farming tool. Its generous FP cost makes it great for taking out crowns, and it only costs 9 FP, so if you can kill more than 3 enemies at once with the Ancestral Horn Talisman, you can get a net positive on your return. The hammer variant of this skill is also really great at catching dodges from agile enemies, like Black Knife Assassin assassins and Zaymor heroes. Although Madness has no utility outside of PvP, this skill still does loads of fire damage and can be buffed appropriately with fire boosting items. Holy shit, this skill is amazing. Frostbite damage, both a close and long range attack, gets boosted with all magic items, Terra Magica, and the Spellblade set if you're wearing it. Just, you have no reason not to use this. Use the follow-up attack to close distance after an enemy attack and break stances. The projectile part of this skill can sometimes trick knights into lowering their shields. Also, wear the Spellblade set. Direct hits score more damage than against those caught in the AoE, so sneaking up to enemies and ensuring a direct hit on the first strike can be really effective. Even if it is pretty fun finding a wandering mob and jump slamming the ground in front of them like goddamn Thor. The increased duration after 1.04 actually makes this worth using. Buffing the Twin Swords gives you a really cool thrusting attack combo that works great with Spear Talisman. Gravity Bolt can be chained in succession, which gives you a surprisingly quick attack option on a colossal weapon. It can severely punish bosses that like standing still, and it can reliably break the stances of smaller enemies in a single use. The skill variant honestly works the exact same way as the sorcery variant. Amazing damage, but it's slower than a sloth taking a shit. Sneak up on an enemy with high defense like a Crucible Knight, and if the target is unaware, you'll get bonus stealth damage. The Great Serpent Hunt is almost guaranteed to stun Rikard no matter what state he's in or what attack he's winding up. If you space out your attacks properly and take advantage of the high damage follow-up attack, you can pretty much keep him stunlocked for his entire second phase and prevent him from doing that one bullshit attack that lasts for like a minute? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want that. It doesn't cost too much FP to use, and the radius makes it a pretty reliable way to keep dogs and imps from rushing you. Use this skill while fighting in water, and the lightning bolt will extend outward in a large AoE, keeping some of its original damage as well as its frostbite status. If you're a pure caster against a melee boss like Grave Duelist or a boss with high elemental resistance like a magma worm, knowledge above all will lower magic and holy defense for everyone, including you, boosting your damage on various spells while giving the enemy as little advantage as possible. Prevent skeletons from reviving themselves, making catacomb exploring much less of a pain and tibia mariners get even easier. Magma Guillotine has the turning radius of a sports car, which makes it a great tool for PvP, but also does serviceable damage without FP, and you can still close distance pretty well. Spinning Slash, but now with fire. Good against hands obviously. The magma doesn't linger for long, but it does prevent surprise flanks from small enemies like dogs because the magma will likely stun anything that steps in it. Great in open areas, but in catacombs and caves you're just gonna spend most of your time flinging them into walls. Which sucks too, because they're really good against skeletons. Use against giants, fire missoula beasts, and godskin duo. While the skill itself cannot be charged, the heavy attacks can, and therefore are boosted by the godfrey icon. The axe talisman, however, does not share the effect. The bastard stars variant can be used to stun enemies on its initial attack, while the Wing of Estelle variant has decent range and can be used against crowds of smaller enemies, knights, and big dudes alike. If one of the explosions managed to stun an enemy, they'll probably get hit multiple times for huge damage. Combine the magic and fire shrouding tiers in one physic flask. The magic beam attack is great for breaking shields and focusing down a single large enemy, while the flame attack is better against multiple smaller enemies at once. Oath of Vengeance you can get extremely early by fighting the Leonine Misbegotten, so you can use it as a shitty Godric's Great rune as it increases all attributes by 5 for 30 seconds. You can cast it before going into a large fight, or even a boss to give you an advantage at the beginning of the fight. The inverse effect of Gravitas, it actually repels enemies away. Anything you see minding their own business near a cliff is asking to be the target of this. Also a pretty decent oh shit button against those weird self-destructing fucks in Caleb. Ordovis Vortex doesn't have as much hyper armor as it probably should, but you can charge it while an enemy's stance is broken, or make an opening yourself by using rejection to stack or knock an enemy over. Use this to shred big and slow enemies, especially after they're recovering from an attack. Dragons like Fortis Axe and Placidus Axe fall to this pretty easily. Best when stacked with other damage boosting buffs like Blood Boil, Grant Me Strength, Terra Magica, and so forth. Old Lore Talisman also works with this skill, despite saying it can only boost sorceries and incantations. If you find yourself being swarmed by multiple enemies, or in a situation where a pure melee strategy would leave you vulnerable, try kiting around and picking off weaker enemies with the Reduvia Blood Blade. If 
if you have Lord of Blood Exaltation, it might give you the damage boost you need to do something a bit more proactive. The slam and the projectiles are two separate attacks, so you can get a little extra damage out of it if you hit something with the very tip of the slam. Not boosted by the Roar Talisman, if only because the damage from the skill comes from the stomp and not the Roar itself. The Charged Heavy is changed into a Lunging Heavy, which can close distance and can be charged by the Axe Talisman. Compensate for the long wind-up time by going for a critical hit first and then use the skill as they're getting back up. This also increases the chance of all four hits connecting as they should. Oh, hey, Onyx Blade, nice seeing you here. Deals heavy frostbite damage, so if you want to activate this and then set yourself on fire with Fire's Deadly Sin, you can deal fire and frostbite damage at the same time. And I think I've stressed enough in these videos just how powerful that can be. The first swing of the spear does its own damage independent from the spears. Also, you can hit shit through walls. This is really not that different from any magma sorceries or incantations you can already find in the game, but the low FP cost and great range makes it efficient for keeping annoying enemies like hands and imps at bay. When active, strong attacks will become combo attacks, making talismans like Godfrey Icon and the Rotten Wing Sword very ideal. Siluria's Woe can be a small AoE or a massive projectile depending on whether or not you charge it. If it's not dragon sized, this skill can probably knock it over. Sorcery of the Crozier doesn't receive bonus damage from the Spellblade set, despite it being both a glintstone sorcery and a skill. This might be a bug, but you can create a similar effect with the Knowledge Above All skill, which lowers magic defense for nearby enemies. Drop off a small ledge somewhere and then wind it up. If pursuing enemies try to attack you, they'll probably just awkwardly fall off the ledge. Despite looking like another boss melting skill, this one is actually much more efficient against groups of smaller enemies. The damage is unchanged no matter how small or large the target is, but against large groups, it seems to hit just as consistently. The Gigsaw is still alive and well. This is actually not boosted by either Winged Sword Talismans, but Lord of Blood Exaltation is still a nice addition once you proc Bleed. Combine a Stamina Talisman loadout with the Cerulean Hidden tier, and you really can just spin for days. It's both magic and a skill which means wearing the Spellblade set will boost its damage. Its initial windup can be used to duck under attacks from taller enemies like Crucible Knights or Sanguine Nobles. This destroys large enemies. If you boost it with Flame Grant Me Strength, it does massive damage and leaves you pretty much unapproachable. Great if you feel like making a wall around you if you have multiple agile enemies trying to attack you, or if you have the sudden urge to blow a dragon's fucking face off. Use it against Melania so she knows her bullshit vampire Bloodborne Rally knockoff ability isn't special and that you have something that can contend with it. Use this against large bosses with giant health pools, because the black flame effect scales based on the target's max HP. Did you know that the cloud actually has a hitbox? Yeah, you can find a huge boss enemy and just run into it in cloud form, and it'll actually do pretty serviceable damage before the final hit even happens. Also, it's an incredibly great tool against Melania, because 9 times out of 10, she won't even try to dodge it. Like, at all. Use Thunderstorm only if you're being surrounded by something. It's a pretty ravenous FP consumer if you use all of the follow-up attacks, so I kinda like to use it as an oh shit button if something really fast is running at me, and I can't really stop it. Against small enemies, the fire will continuously stunlock them until dead. Most larger enemies can still just walk through the flames and spank you though. Nope, you're not getting a tip either. Moving on. Troll's Roar scales with strength. It's good for knocking people on their ass and setting them up for a strong attack, but it's even better for baiting out a knight that's being overly defensive. The initial roar will likely prompt a counterattack, and with good damage reduction items, you can just poise right through his little toothpick sword and paddle the shit out of him. Obviously great for penetrating shields, but if you ever catch a knight enemy acting overly defensive, this attack usually puts them on the offense pretty quickly. But I guess so does the other tip I just said, and I guess poking them with throwing knives does the exact same thing. So, procs poison pretty much instantly if it hits. Begin boss fights with this maneuver and then put it away once the target has been poisoned. And now you can just fight like normally with the added benefit of damage over time. Used to take out lots of small dudes with Taker's cameo and top off your HP. Wave of Destruction deals both physical and magic damage. However, it seems to scale primarily off of strength and not intelligence. Hell yeah, farming Albinorix and shit. Spellblade set increases its damage, which is weird because the description specifically says glintstone skills, but I guess any skill that does magic damage will be compatible with it, so have fun. I honestly prefer the weapon skill variant of this 10 times over. It has a quicker windup, it does more damage, you get a significant hyper armor boost, and frostbite seems to proc almost immediately. Consider ditching the spell and go after the Zaymore Curve Sword instead. Uh, okay. Let's see what I've got in here. 
more tip videos, face making tutorial, catacombs tier list. Well, I can't exactly say the well is running dry, but this whole look in the comments and see what video people want me to make strategy seems to be working out so far. So yeah, keep doing that. Okay, bye.